Now that we understand the basic Andalusian cadence and its short form, if you don't, there are two videos talking about that. I put the link in the descriptions and maybe here. Now we can look at the very common variations that exist on this cadence. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, but maybe without knowing what it is. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play guitar, you play cajon, you play palmas, or you just want to understand how it works. Today, I want to explain to you a first variation on the Andalusian cadence. As you know, the Andalusian cadence is used all the time in flamenco. There are strategies to make it every time a bit different, a bit personalized, a bit more interesting, instead of repeating over and over the same thing that would be boring. But you know that flamenco is not boring, right? It is, in a way, the art of doing always the same thing, but never the same way. One of the most useful and common tools that we use is called the substitution. Basically, we just exchange one chord, one step of the cadence for another one that doesn't belong to the original cadence. Here we are going to substitute the fourth step for another chord, another step that doesn't belong to the cadence. It's another step from another stairway. And it sounds like this. Instead of... <laughs> the same but different right i give a quick musical explanation for those who are interested but i keep it short i promise the fourth step of our cadence is a minor chord and we will exchange it for its major relative if we are playing por arriba in e the fourth step is an a minor and we change it for its major relative the c major and if we play por medio in A, the fourth step is a D minor. Its relative major is F major. So we change this one for this one. And we have this cadence. The interesting part here is not to know the name of the chords or the name of the substitution process. The interesting thing is to perceive that it changes the aspect, the color, the sound, the emotion, the feeling of the original cadence. Instead of major, relative and blah blah blah, we can call this chord Manolo. It will help us become intimate. Manolo has a very strong personality, a very strong color among the other chords of the cadence. The Andalusian cadence is somewhat dark and mysterious, right? And suddenly when Manolo appears, everything becomes much brighter. It's like suddenly the rain and the clouds go away and sun comes back. We can hear this a lot por tiento. Or the same por tango. Or at the end of a solea instead of this. You'll find this. In an escobilla, for example, the guitarist plays the Andalusian cadence over and over to complete the footwork cycle, the rhythmic cycle of an escobilla, as we explained in a previous video. So the first thing they can do to vary a bit, to give a bit more of interest, is just to invite Manolo.
once we are familiar with Manolo, with its color, its personality, it's easy to identify it in other contexts. For example, at the beginning of a fandango, any type of fandango, usually, most of the time, the first tercio resolves on the Manolo color. <laughs> This is very interesting because it could be an indication of what is the style of the letra we are listening to. This color can help us to understand that this letra is a letra de fandango. To know exactly which style of fandango, we need to know the exact melody. But at least it's an indication that it could be a fandango. For solea in the traditional styles, we never find this color at the beginning of the cante, at the end of the first tercio. So if it happens, it could be a fandango por solea. It exists. It means a letra with the structure and the melody of a fandango on a 12 bits compass de solea. In a cante por tango, it can help you spot a few styles, the tangos extremeños. Not all of them, but sometimes these little things can help us to narrow down the possibilities, the different options. I repeat the real indication, the reliable information comes from the melody of the cante, but it is an indication, a hint. So let's do a bit of ear training together. I play sequences of chords among the Andalusian cadence and sometimes I play Manolo and you need to spot Manolo. Here in this key. The first sequence is Here I did four, three, two, three, Manolo, two, one. Another one por Minera. I give you the cadence. And now the sequence. I did two, three, Manolo, one. Another one here for Granaina. Here I did four. Manolo, two, one. And I'll create more exercises like this one because it's very important to train our ear. With this, you have another tool to expand your knowledge and your ability to listen, to understand, to identify, to research, to create, to personalize. And if you start stalking Manolo in every cante, baile and toque, you'll see that you'll find it everywhere. I repeat, the basic tools are often always the same, but the way we use them is different. It is what will give the different flavors, the different colors, the different personality. The important thing is not so much the what, but the how. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a comment. Let me know what you want me to explain in these videos. And also go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses and my way of teaching flamenco. I also have a little gift there waiting for you. So I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco. Make it fun, make it different, make it your own.